until the end of December last year, if you ask anybody what are the achievements of President Buhari, the first thing that they will mention is the issue of security. Everybody acknowledged the fact that he has succeeded in the area of security. On the ground, 2015, out of 27 local governments in Borono State, 13 were controlled by Boko Haram. There was no Nigerian government in that place. The local government chairman all ran away. There was nobody there. But today, there is no single local government under the control of Boko Haram. At that time, even within Abuja, we had attack here and there. If I had offices, they put barricades where you cannot enter into the offices uh, freely. I look at some of those security issues as political. People want to ensure that, oh, if this man has done so well in this area, let's destroy it and see what happens. Let's make sure that he doesn't have anything to present. It means that somebody is funding them to do that, just to kill, and to make sure that they demarcate the president. And the military, do we have the capacity to take care of Yes, the military have the capacity. In some of the places where the military also was deployed to take care of security, there were some issues which were rather political. And we tried not to hit the policy. Most of the states where the military were deployed to take care of security, they did not support the military to even to be deployed there in the first instance. In some of the states where you hear a lot of cry, we went in, they say, yes, we have the state law. Are you coming to help us to implement the law? We say, no, we don't come to help you to implement the law. We come to ensure that there's no more killings. From that moment, there was a security against the military. And we find out also some of those places, we arrested some people that committed some infraction against other people in other places. We discovered that they were sent by some politicians to go and do that in another village. We have herdsmen who are not the normal herdsmen that have been moving around. And those ones, they even attacked some military men who were deployed to stop them. But now there is an operation we call Operation War Stroke. It was launched on the 8th of May that take care of these Nasarawa states, Benue states, Taraba states, and Zamfara. These are the four states that look so difficult to ensure that things will return back to normal, like another state. So we brought in some special forces from all the services and with equipment, fighter jet that, that they use in areas where they have motorcycle so that they can also go into those remote areas that it is difficult to go in with uh, vehicles. And if you read through the news, a lot has been done to ensure that those people that they are using to destabilize the country are taken out completely. If you go through some of the operations of the military, they have herdsmen that their cattle has been rustled by some criminals. And these criminals, they also commit crime here and there. There was a revelation that uh, we got from the Operation Wastro. The herdsmen, they will use their cows and they hide behind them to attack the military. If you know a traditional herdsman, you cannot do that because they protect their cows. So what the military uh, does now, they take the cows and they take those uh, herdsmen. So I don't see them as the real herdsmen because no herdsmen will want to do anything that will harm their livelihood. And when people are speaking politics when it comes to security, it's unfortunate. And that is why I have the feeling that some of these insecurity are politically motivated. We have our colleagues that are specially trained in such situations they will begin to follow them right into the villages. So the statement of political opposition or whatever is unfortunate, but we don't consider that as anything that should be used to judge the government of the day when it comes to security issues. The government has done so much, and each time that there is situation that come in that are new, we sit down and come up with strategies on how to counter it. May 2015, when the administration came, what was the security situation that it inherited. Minimum of 17 local governments were being held by Boko Haram. When I say held, they sat in the Emma's palaces, they ran the local councils, they collected taxes, dictated the pace of life for the people in those local governments. Today, not one local government is in their grip. Then, in 2015, Boko Haram was in Northwest. It was in Northeast. It was in North Central. It was about going into Southwest because it was already at Kogi. And then you saw the administration began to beat Boko Haram back. Chase them out of North Central, out of Northwest, out of Abuja, the seat of the Federation. And then Boko Haram became circumscribed in a small part of Northeast. Adamawa, Yobe. 
and Bono. At a point, even Ademawa and Yobe were cleared. Only just occasional forays they made. And they were localized inside Sambisa Forest. And we know what eventually happened to them there. So, as we speak, Boko Haram is scattered like sheep without shepherd. They are mixed with the civil population, and it's from there that they do those cowardly attacks once in a while. Comparing the status and situation of Boko Haram today with 2015 is like comparing heaven to hell. They're incomparable. It's the people who live in the Northeast that can tell you. Roads that have been closed for years have been reopened and have been you. Where NYSC never held orientation for years, the places have reopened. The MS who fled their palaces have returned. Nightlife has returned. People are back to farms. The difference is clear. So, in terms of security, the government has done well. But are there challenges? Yes, there are challenges. Particularly, from the beginning of 2018, we have seen wanton killings in different parts of the country. Now, under the umbrella of farmers' husband clashes, a lot of things have crept in. Hidden hostile hands have gone in there and they are trying to demarket the government. Anybody that believes that all those killings are farmers and husband has another thing coming. A lot of things are hidden under that. But eventually, it will be sorted out. Our soldiers at that time were running away from Boko Haram because our soldiers were ill-equipped to face the kind of weaponry the Boko Haram people were using. But then corruption continued. We saw private jets with pastors going to attempt to buy weapons in South Africa. But yet, our soldiers were left ill-equipped to where in different situations, we saw them actually running away from the enemy. That was a very shameful time for Nigeria. There were a lot of things wrong then, and I'm glad we have President Muhammadu Buhari as our president. President Buhari, probably the greatest president of Nigeria. Can't think of anybody else that surpassed him from what we've seen so far. And that's why we need four plus four. We need him to complete what he started. We need him to clean out the rot. We inherited a system of ad administration by which the national security actually had provided funding for political party in power. Money intended for procurement of weapons, aircraft, uniform and boots, you know, for our own soldiers was shared between politicians and taken home. All of that has changed now and a system of government to government procurement has been put in place. There is no longer that opportunity for procurement people to just uh, pocket money from the purchase of weapons. As it is now, the Nigerian army, whether they are serving in the multinational joint task force or serving from the various divisions of the Nigerian army that are confronting terror and criminality in parts of the country, they are properly kitted and the police is doing well in terms of acquisition of helicopters, aircraft for the air force, armored trucks for the military and all of that. The navy is being kitted, a lot of ships have been acquired. And much of the calm in the Delta that we now experience is coming from the fact that we have an armed forces that is ready to achieve national objectives on the blow of the whistle. I think our democracy has lasted and we should also begin to learn how other people practice democracy elsewhere. I have not heard, at least the people we've copied from, even as heated as the last election in America was. Nobody brings security into it. They don't bring security into politics because we are talking about lives. As far as the military is concerned, it is not the issue of party. It is the issue of the person who occupies that office as the president and commander-in-chief. So our loyalty is to the nation. Our loyalty is to, to the fact that democracy should survive. And we do that with our lives. Mm -hmm.